In the previous lecture, we connected the lab jack to Kipling, and in this case via USB, and that gave us access to all of the tabs so that we could access various types of functionalities. In the first tab, which is a topic of this lecture, we get information about the lab jack on the left side of this page, and then we've got links to documentation on the right side. You can play around with those links and we'll open up a browser window and uh, take it to uh, example code or uh, documentation, uh, data sheets, etc. But uh, for the moment, uh, what's more interesting to us right now is the device overview. Up the top, you've got the general information, things such as the serial number, which is what we used earlier here as an identifier for the direct connect option. Uh, we also have access to the information about the model and the name, which you can set and also use as a unique identifier. Going to change it in a moment. We also get Ethernet MAC address and whether the device is authorized to work with Kipling or not. So before I continue, I'm going to change the name of this device to uh, actually forget about the S. I'm just going to say Peter T4 and. Yep. Let's try this again. And click on change name and then let's see we may need to disconnect and reconnect. So you can see that the correct name does appear here uh, in the device selector tab. Uh, and once you do a refresh of the page, it will appear here in the device overview. And we'll get information about uh, the firmware version, the hardware version, etc. The current status and down here about the enabled features. There's a device LED, which so you've got a couple of LEDs on this side here. So there's the communications LED, which blinks whenever the device is speaking to Kipling. And then you've got the green LED, which is the status LED, which uh, kind of flickers when there is activity in the device. For example, when you are running a Lua script or executing a Lua script autonomously on the device or when uh, various registers are being accessed, then the green LED is going to blink. So these are the two LEDs. Now there is also a watchdog, which I have dedicated the lecture later on in this course. As a watchdog, I can get uh, documentation and information about it here, which allows you to do things such as reset the device if, for example, no communication has occurred for a particular amount of time that you can define, or if there is no um, activity in one of the DIOs, the digital input outputs, again, um, during a time frame that you have defined. I'm going to give you some examples and explain how to use the watchdog in a dedicated lecture later on. So I'm going to leave this aside for now. And that's about it with the uh, device overview tab. Uh, next, I'm going to take a bit of time to talk about the dashboard, which is um, one of the most useful tabs. Uh, the, the dashboard tab, look, with the register metrics and the Lua script debugger is where we'll be spending a lot of time uh, in this course. So let's get into the dashboard and have a quick overview of what this tab does in the next lecture.